I'm Angel Forrest, and today on the Red Hot Sofa Talk, I have a very good friend of mine who um, I met a few years ago, but got very close to in the last couple of years. Uh, I like to call her my personal guru. She's helped me through so many things in my life. She is a gardener. She is uh, wonderful, and I love her, and I want to introduce you to her. Her name is Shelly Meisner. Shelly! Hi, sweetie. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for accepting. Very happy Thanks to be here. Thanks for not cleaning your, your, the mud off your knees. I love it. It's blueberry picking. You're true woman. Six o'clock in the morning. I love it. Berries hide underneath the leaves. You clean up very well, I have to say. It happens not too often, but it does happen. <laughs> Thanks to you with your guidance and instructions to make sure that I match, <laughs> don't just, you know, collage. Uh, collide, collide with the couch. I, yeah, I was going to collide with the couch. Yeah, no, but I love that, though. I, I actually was dressed differently because I thought you would show up, you know, because you're gardening all day, all the time, and that you would have your shorts on and you'd be, you know, doing your thing. They're ready and they're in the car. I've yeah, already yeah. changed. I've been to work this morning and I picked rosemary with you in mind. Oh and God, I know that beautiful. you're doing a lot of juicing and everything. So I've got cucumbers and zucchinis and celery Gorgeous and flowers. all kinds of herbs <gasps> for you. And these are from your garden? Yeah, the I work for Sophie Demaret and she She's has a magnificent taste. garden. And unfortunately, they won't be here until September. So I thought it might oh, be appropriate to have a few flowers for Thank your you. interview. And cash, of course, we have cash the cash cow, which is Shelly's doggy. And Frida, well, she wants nothing to do with the situation because it's too hot in this beautiful scenery of this great backyard, which is my neighbor's backyard. Uh, I thought it'd be perfect because it's flowers and you're such a flower yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I want to, uh, to get you involved in this because I have a bunch of women that I'm kind of having a uh, red hot sofa talk with uh, because it's part of my life, this time in my life, uh, going through the menopause thing and now a big move and everything. I just, I, I wanted people to meet you and know and, and get the vibe of how, well, how you saved me uh, many times over in the past three or four years. Um, whenever I was down, whenever I was doubting myself and you would go off on a rant and kick my head into place with your words and, and I appreciate it so much. But I admire you so much and, and one of the songs that, uh, that's on Hellbent with Grace uh, which, by the way, I didn't mention it, but this is uh, for a promotion for Hell About the Grace. I want you all to meet the woman that inspired me to do this record. And um, Grace is uh, made about women that are a little older, in her 50s, like us, and that uh, don't look it. And <laughs> pause. And uh, that have inspired me because, you know, life is, uh, is, uh, can be a pain in the ass. And, go through a lot of shit, which I know you have and, uh, and I have, and how you've come out uh, shining and, and inspiring so many people. And uh, just to share that, like to, you know. Well, like your music, people attach themselves to words. They help heal themselves. The songs, the musics, the melodies, you write, you pour your heart out, and people can feel that in your music. Thank you. I do do that. It's like a... A medicine for me. Very like it's therapeutic. A way of, uh, what, what is it to say, like that, that valve thing that you turn off to? Uh, I didn't realize it until a couple of albums ago, but this album really, I have to say, the many years of uh, accumulation of shit that I've sort of pushed down, uh, your talks and your idea on minimalism and your idea on, on you know, Mother Nature being a freaking hot ass chick who knows what she's doing and, and uh, how it's important, you know, not what you're, you're, you know, have around you, but what you leave with people, like what you were saying the other day. And Mom's favorite thing, it's not what you tell people or what you do, it's how you make them feel, and yeah. you make people feel phenomenal with your music. Thank you. Which is a huge gift, and I think right now, on the planet more than ever, women are rising up and they're taking their places and they're being comfortable with who they are, whether it be a woman in the garden or a woman belting her voice out. And yeah. when we collaborate together, we are all better. We're all yeah. stronger. Well, that's the thing. I, I, uh, I've always been very woman, but I do realize uh, in the last, you know, maybe five, seven years or something that this competition between women is absolutely ridiculous. And in my business, particularly, uh, you know, we're a bunch of female singers and Everybody's, you know, I realize with these women, we don't have that. It's the people around us that are trying to compete us against each other and trying to play us against each other. And, and it's ridiculous. And the women that I'm thinking of, you know, which when I wrote Grace was you and, you know, Dawn and Lulu. And 
we, we all just love what we do and we all have, have overcome so many obstacles. And in, in being supportive of each other has helped so much. And I, and I think that the younger generation need to learn that, you know? Your songs, you storytell in your songs. And because what you've lived is also what many people in their lifetime live. There, some lessons in life are extraordinarily hard. Yeah. And sometimes we're, we don't have the support system around us that we need to exactly. recognize that it is just a learning. And As it, a man or a woman. And yeah. it helps us find that strength deep down inside. And when you do, and you can write about it, and then you can share it, you're not just healing yourself every time you sing it. Everybody that's singing along with you. When I was in Sherbrooke the other day and you performed the Marigold with, with in memory of your mother, every woman around me was singing with you. Yeah. And it was the first time you performed it. it. Yeah, it was magical. And it wasn't like they all had had an opportunity to learn all of the words, no, no. but it resonated with them on a cellular level. Yeah. So parallels that you're living, whether it be pains or hardships or whatever, come out in your words and in your music. I feel really grateful to have that uh, ability because when I first started, I, I, I thought my vocabulary was not large enough and that the subjects were... Probably isn't. No, well, I know <laughs> I have a problem I, in both languages, French and English, but... <gasps> but that's the, one but of my favorite... That out. <laughs> but that's one of my favorite Simple. lines. Simple yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite lines in one of your songs is the fact that you're not... French and that yeah. you're translating it yeah. and that, that yeah. that's inter it makes you yeah. real it makes you authentic and yeah. today more than anything on the planet is we need people to, to be, be real and yeah. authentic and not to be afraid to well, be it's, who it's they people are like you and 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 the people like that who will come up to me after the show after hearing Marigold for the first time and be of French like they're not even English and they, and they just resonate like you said either with the lyrics or with just the sound this, the sound vibration that just makes them feel something so much. And it took me a long time to, to, you know, when I did hear For You back in the day, that was the first time I realized that my pain, writing that record as simply as I did, healed me. And for years to come, even now, we're talking, you know, 18 years later, 13 years later, sorry. <laughs> Matt's not my strong point either. Good thing I got good hair, eh? Do I have good hair? I brought you rosemary for your for your memory. For my so. memory, because the menopause is <laughs> killing me. Um, it, it 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 and you again. You when you had that record and you would come back and say, "Oh my God!" You know, just so you know, I've shared your album with people and people are saying this and you're, you're helping people. And I thought this chick's pretty smart. At first, I was like, "She's pretty smart." So and and she speaks the truth and she whatever. I'm like, wow, and it, it moved me and it made me. It brought me closer to you in respect that you knew me inside out because you understood my lyrics and you, and you, you they meant something, you know? So it, it gave me the strength to, because every record, every time you write something, you can't think about being judged and you can't think about somebody saying, oh, you know, that's been said or that's Which for said. you this time must have been tough because didn't you win best yes. writer, best yeah. uh, album and best vocalist all on yeah. the last album? The, the On Angels 11, yeah. yeah. Best, so this yeah. is a follow-up. Yeah, yeah, it's true. This is the first, uh, Which wow, you probably true. didn't think about, but I thought about yeah. it. I thought, wow, that's a lot of pressure because, because you succeeded so well wow, with that yeah. album. You know, I thought about that Not the just the writing but, part about it, but the album yeah. itself and your vocals, right. all of it together. All of it you together. covered it all. And everybody that's had a preview of the album has said, that's, you know, that's it's new for you. That's different. It's not like anything else you've done. And I wait for it, you know. And, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it's true that the, the, the songs, uh, well, collaborated, obviously, with Wiki Paquet and Denis and I, uh, the three of us have written the songs. But there is something different, you know, like, when I came back, I went to India last January. When I came back, I felt, I felt something different. You're in outside the, the box right now. Yeah, I guess. Instead of having to feel like you have to do Janice or you have to do blues or you have mm -hmm. to do th therapy or soul, or because you have a unique, you're, you've proven who you are, and your words yeah. resonate profoundly with people. So just being you is is is, is what they want. Out. Is well, what they want. Cool. That's what kinda they cool. want. Anyway, the album is coming out November first, and I can't wait for. The people, you know, the, the people that come to the shows uh, to see what they think, because it is sort of 70s and country and all that. Anything particular in the album that you uh, 
Well, I pretty much know all of the words to the song Grace so far and Marigold. <laughs> Those two really uh, probably hit home. The Grace one really, I, you know, I'm Mother Nature kind yeah. of girl, so like flowing like the river is kind yeah. of my so whole thing. Yeah, I was thinking about you when I wrote it, for sure. And my mother had a saying that every person you meet will teach you something about yourself. So, you know, you've been a, you know, the mirror is always both ways, yeah. you know. Uh, pulling yourself together and presenting yourself to the public when you work in the garden with the plants and the nature all the time. There's not a lot of people checking out whether your hair is in place or whether no, yeah. you have deodorant on. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. Except we, all bring, <laughs> we all bring different things to the table. And I plan on having my dancing shoes on for the next for coming the, for years. The coming yes, years. Yeah, yes, I hope so. yes. Well, that, I was talking about the minimalist thing. You know, we're right now working on, um, on turning the bus into our home. And I was just saying to somebody the other day, I said, you know, I can't imagine myself years ago ever thinking about uh, going down to, you know, a bag of clothes. Well, okay, I'm going to have two bags of clothes because I have show clothes and I have my everyday clothes, which are pretty close. They run, you know, parallel, if you will. Me too. Yeah. You look gorgeous, I have to say. <laughs> but uh, you taught me that, though. Like, and I saw you when you, you've moved a few times in the last year or so. And, and like you said, you had like nothing left and you just had like, I go to your house and you've got this many clothes in this cupboard. And I was like, oh my God, okay. And then when your, your dad passed away, you had all the stuff from the house yeah. and you had to get rid of all of that, but you still did it again. Because I could see myself with a home full of stuff that belongs to my, my, my last parent and starting to hoard everything. Oh, well, I remember when this happened or that happened. And you didn't, you know, I'm sure you kept a little whatever, but you, you were able to disperse it and send it out and share it with the people and... In your songs, you even say it, a place of grace. You get to a certain place in your lifetime and you realize you're not your stuff. You're not the car that you drive or the song that you sing. You're really just yourself. Well, and you can't take as lovely as the red couch is and as magnificent as your albums are, at the end of the day, you're angel. Yeah. And even if everybody strips away absolutely everything from you, you're still angel. Right. They can't take away all of those experiences. Right. They can't take away all of that life that you've right. lived and all of that richness yeah. and all of those experiences. And when you get to be comfortable with that, you embrace that. Magic. So then all of every moment like this a place of grace, yeah. becomes magical because yeah. you're really living authentically. But how do people learn that though? That's the thing. I, mean, I started Kundalini Yoga in March and you, you again pushed me towards that because you were talking about the Tibetan rites and doing all kinds of the things that you do up at 5 a.m. and really enjoying Mother Nature and all that. And there's so much shit going on that you can't really, it's hard to, plow it all away and go, this is what it is. This is who I am. This is what's important. You know, even like with your husband or your kid and you ask them to do things and you get a, you know, and you feel like, it's like, you can't. I mean, this person is, you know, your life. It's part of your life. It's who you share your life with. You can't, you, you can't have all of these things building up and taking out on other people. And I find a Kundalini, as you, when you're doing your meditation, stuff like that, it's helped me to whew, relax. And just, this is not important, which is why I've been able to get rid of stuff and all that. But people that, that can't find the meditation or the whatever it is, the gardening or whatever it is that they can turn off the valve and, or open up the valve and let all the steam out, you know, the people that, that land up being, having like a the mental issue thing where, where you land up, I don't even know if that's the right word or the right phrase to say it, but they get depressed or get, get, get weighed down. How do you, besides, I know I've found the yoga thing to get me out of it, to stop with my OCD and all that. But how does somebody do that, you know, like, when I wrote the blame game about my cousin, like I had no idea that this guy was not well and he's just happy as dude it was and he was doing for everybody and you never would think it. And then, you know, and then you feel, how come I didn't see that? You know, how come you don't, the people that are just trapped in, in, in their in stuff and how, how to get them to ask for help or to say, you know, cause I asked for help, I asked you for help. I didn't know how heavy anything was, but I knew that I wasn't good. I think that that's probably one of the most courageous things is that when you're a very strong person, you have a tendency not to ask for help. And the most incredible gift that you can give, especially if you're a strong person, is to ask for help. Yeah. Because all of those who aren't as strong as you are feel valued because they can lift yeah. you back up. Right, right. That's yeah, that's true. Most that. of the time when we're we're exchanging with people, most people don't have the ability to listen. 
they're waiting for their turn to talk yeah. and they can't hear you because there's just so much going on inside. And I blame a lot of that to society and the yeah. whole box Instagram thing. You know, you're bought yeah. In yeah. A, born in a hospital and taken home to a house, it's a box. And you go to school, it's a box. And then you have an office. You haven't lived that life. But the reality of it is we've all been programmed to consume and consume and consume. And then once we have all of this stuff, we're supposed to be happy. Right. Well, what we have is a lot of debt yeah. and a lot of things to take care of. Yeah. And as you wait. rid of all of those materialistic things... What happens is you free up a whole bunch of time. The quality of the relationships you have is greater because yeah. you're not spending so much time tending to everything that yeah. you own to make, oh, where's my phone yeah. and where's this? You don't have all of those That's things. Right. You don't need to worry about where they are. Right. <laughs> and that freedom allows you to be more authentic because you're not worried that you have the same right. clothes you're on that you the had presence. the last time because trust yeah. me people really aren't that interested no, exactly they really exactly. are pretty self-absorbed I think at the end of the day that's what the whole yeah well that's i find even just deciding to make the big move into the bus which i noticed and i'm very proud of you i could explain to you way back probably at least 10 years ago i think i mentioned that the most powerful word in the vocabulary was the word you mm. and you used it a lot and that will make the album very popular because it goes and touches on people's ego. So when right. they're singing, right. it's really touching them on a I cellular level. I, I know you that. didn't, no. but it's there and it's it's powerful and it will it'll be a big help. Yeah, I, I just I, I I know that going through this menopausal thing, you know, with the uh, writing the record, I had a hard time getting through the end. I went to India. It helped me out a little bit to really think about all the things that you know we've been through and all the great talks we'd had and seeing the way you live and seeing how the other women that I'd written the songs about had lived just having just listening to the album now I, I feel like I'm at a totally different spot in my life and I'm good with it and I never thought that I mean I have a fear of death you know, and, and doing this Kundalini yoga thing you has helped me. Have. Well, this, the yoga thing, because I know you you spoke about that. I was like, oh my God, really? Like, I, I go, go to bed thinking about, oh, the things are too good, I'm going to die. You know, that's right. Oh, I'm too happy. But then I got married, the, 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 our honeymoon night, I was like looking in the eye, pillow talk, crying. This, Not because I'm by so the way, I'm so happy because I think I'm going to die now because we're, we're perfect, you know, which is a terrible thing. It's like, a, it's, it's I, an unnecessary program that's not be serving you anymore. Right. So you can just delete it right. and replace it with one that's a little bit more positive. Right. And like how phenomenal this album is. So every time next time you have those thoughts mm -hmm. about yeah. death or anything, you, oh no, this is a phenomenal album. Yeah. It's a way better thought. It's crazy and that's that's really what I've been doing. Like And that's the law every... of attraction. It really is a law of attraction. As you all know, my dog named Cash Cow and Ever since I've acquired him, thanks to my dog, I have probably my dream job, really, right. my literally my dream job, the flowers and the vegetables. I'm working at somebody else's property, but it's creative. I run it like it's my own, and they yeah. give me Cal Blanche, and my creative ability Juices is... Are flowing, and it's cool, because it's got a history to it. My family's been in West Bolton for over 200 years, so right. to have a piece of property that I can tend to and call be responsible yeah. for, and it's, it's by far the... Mo singing, music, blues, gardening, nature. So you find it's, your, it's, you find that's your how you heal. Spirituality for you is... Well, right true. now we're in consciousness is on a super rise. Everybody around the planet, thanks to the internet, consciousness is arriving. Yes. People are waking up and they're, so they don't want to do the same job that they've done for 60 mm -hmm. years. They're waking up. Everybody's at different levels. But blues is one of their tools mm -hmm. for people and especially I think our baby boomer generation because there's so many of them yeah. and they're coming into retirement and mm -hmm. they're living something parallel to you they've acquired and amassed a lot yeah. of stuff yeah. and they're not getting healthier and now no. they're at a fr more fragile place in their lifetime and they want they want to be remembered for something more than just being a plumber or being well, an that's, electrician that's, or that's, yeah when I wrote no, no doubt you know it started off uh, about, you know, drinking wine and, you know, uh, at four o'clock having my wine. And because of menopause, you know, you want to eat and you, and you want to cry and you want to kill somebody and you want to drink wine after, right? <laughs> well, I'm trying to do any of those things, but still. <gasps> or you <laughs> swim in your sheets. <laughs> you swim in your sheets. That was my thing. Was it swimming in oh. your sheets? Oh, my goodness. I'm not so bad. I, I was a while ago, but that's Yeah, you got a hot off. man, so you're probably used oh, to the heat. Oh, he's so hot. He makes me hot. Just He's like a, a sleeping with a bush, as they say. But um, the, the song is about that exactly, about... 
you know, waking up in the morning with a mindful heart and you want to do good and you want to be healthy and do your yoga and do your breathing, do your meditation. And then come four o'clock, you know, you have your wine. And at the point where sometimes it, it leads to a little more wine and you wake up in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. going, Jesus, why do I feel like shit? Why? But never. Okay, that's it. No more. Then you go through your next day again and again. And it, I think a balance is really important. But I know the red wine. I mean, literally, wine just makes my freaking temperature go up anyway. I think you know? the secret is, is, is that self-discovery. You know, what works for you yeah. doesn't work for me. For me, yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. I, I don't have any clocks in my house, and I wake up with the sun. Even if I have all of the windows closed and no clocks anywhere, I wake up and it's 535 so what or 555. What, what happen? Because you had real estate, you had cancer, you had divorces, you had... You had all kinds of shit. You had bankruptcy. You had everything, and then lost both parents. Lost both parents. I think that I think I signed up for it to be sure that I would be wake, woken up. I think that uh, I think we 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 have these challenging experiences to give ourselves opportunities to be more present, because if you think about it, everybody's parents die. Yeah. They don't tell you that in the educational system, or when you're young, your parents don't even talk about it. But the reality it is, we all experience loss. Yeah. And we're all going to deal with health issues, whether it's directly to ourselves or one of our siblings or children. Our children, God forbid, yeah. you know, and yeah. we lose our parents. But today, more than ever, we children, people are losing their children yeah. before their day. Yeah. You know, we're not taught the preciousness of love and yeah. the preciousness of life and that what we put in our body really matters and what comes out of our mouth really, really matters. matters. Yeah, yeah. And when you sing, you're singing, you're healing people. So what comes out of your mouth yeah. is you're sharing that from your soul, just like me bringing vegetables. Mm -hmm. That's my way That's of sharing yeah, my yeah. soul. Which I love, by the way. So beautiful. It changes a lot, Ch changing the way you eat. I mean, you do it with menopause, you change the way you eat, you have to not drink because it, it, you know, it's not good. It makes everything, amplifies all the, the uh, symptoms, you know? But it's true, the, it's just, it, I wish with the, like with the girls, I wrote Looking Glass for the, my two daughters, for Jazz and Dylan, and I'm so proud of the way they are. And I just, I wish them to learn before like it took me a long time, you know. Like I was in my 30s before I started to. You don't not want be them asshole, to have you know? the, the journey. You'd... The journey, yeah, but I, but with the right tools. Get it, like you said. Open yourself up for stuff to happen, but have the tools to deal with it and to move on and to open yourself up. And you know? just don't take so much personally. I think one of our biggest issues today is everybody takes it personally. They make it about themselves. Something happens. I mean, the kids. What the kids? Anybody. Something happens. Like I was supposed to rent a house in Bolton Center. And the woman said, you can rent it, have it for free, it's not a problem. I bought chip rock, got windows, got it all. Mm. I've changed my mind. Yeah. I could have been really upset, yeah. but it's not about me. Right. I realized that some people are very attached to their stuff, stuff and their things and everything. And it was another opportunity for me to see that, oh yeah, you know, like even my father's things, like if I put them in this new little sh cottage that's not winterized, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave them there. Yeah. It would my parents would be really happy. It's like the little record player with the big sofa couch overlooking the pond and everything. Mm -hmm. If I come back, I might rent it another year, but I might not, and so that's you're okay. You're that's okay. At, at, at peace in my with car. Everything. You're good. You can I'm in, in my car. car now. Yeah. And even my clothes. My mother was Mrs. Rummage before this whole secondhand yeah, clothing thing in, became yeah. a fashion. Yeah. I mean, I live in, I have the privilege to live in a beautiful town with very wealthy people, so their seconds are pretty, pretty nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so got the nice I, I don't wear things multiple times. Yeah. I wear them and I enjoy the experience. And, and you give them back. Then I give them yeah. back, especially now I've had the opportunity to do theater and perform, mm -hmm. so I totally get what you do. Yeah. And even more so now, because I feel like I'm playing dress up. And yeah. if I don't love it, I don't wear it. No, that's it, yeah. Well, that's when I'm going through my clothes now, like I, what you said. And I just picture myself, like, in the bus and, like, having the, the, the bus comfy clothes and doing that. And then having my bin of stuff to wear to the, to the gigs and to do whatever. Because you don't want to be in the same outfit all the time, you know? Like, just because people go... Because even I go on, online and I'm looking at pictures going... What gig was that? Where was that? Oh, yeah, I'm wearing that. I remember that because, you know... But keep in mind, too, that just like you hand on things, people will, too. Yeah, no, no, for sure. So yeah. as soon as we open that abundance mm -hmm. and we get... It's the letting go thing. You're, you're so... 
And I'm, I'm, and I'm getting it now because every time something leaves out of the house, I feel a weight off my shoulders. It comes back. Everything. More but I, and differently. I don't want the shit back. No, That's no, no, not necessarily. I don't want anything back. Yeah, but, but like you donated your stuff and look, yeah. and the money came back to yeah. help the bus. That's it. That's yeah. how it That's works. It. it doesn't come yeah. back necessarily in the same, same form. Thing, yeah. But it's a great feeling. And I don't think of myself as a hoarder, but people give me things and I feel like I can't get rid of that because it's it's, it's It was it's given mean, to you. It was a it's, gift. It's, it's bad. It's bad karma, you know. But I do save certain things and whatever, but I feel the more that I pass on something to someone and, I, and it's something that they really like love, they go, oh, and I, and I can see it's them, it's gonna give another life. Like when I go garage selling or whatever, I've never bought a stained glass one in my life that doesn't have a crack in it. I want it to be old and have soul and have lived and you know, like that's just the way I am, but I have a lot of that stuff. So now bringing it right down, like I just, I, I look at you and I think, like I think this is your, like it's like, I love that move. It's like, it is what it is, and let's just roll with it, you know? But you know what? Like People river, are going to you know? love your stuff mm -hmm. because it was yours. Yeah. So if you loved it, even if they only have it for a period of time, mm. they're going to love it because it was yours. It's, it's and a, it might last for a year. It might last 20 years. They might keep it for forever, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, because I, I have. I've, anyway, it's been it's quite. It's been an amazing thing about uh, getting the bus ready, and we're really excited about going on tour, and just living through it, and you know, being here it's and but be. minimalizing. Now we've got a forty foot bus, but I'm sure the more that we talk, it'll go down to uh, twenty five at some point. But this is too big. Let's get something smaller. But um, tell me something about what you find. I mean, obviously, it's always the same answer with you, but what you find attractive in or sexy in a person. Oof. Your husband's right over there. <laughs> um, yeah, Shelly's got a little bit of a crush on Denis, but I'm okay with that. At least, he knows, at least I'm very oh, open, open and honest absolutely, about it. Absolutely, absolutely. If you weren't, I'd be worried. But, I, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a creative person, mm -hmm. so I have a lot of admiration, admi admiration for people who are confident enough in themselves to explore that side of themselves. Right. I don't think that we are encouraged too much, even as a young child. No. I was an artist. I wanted to draw for Disney. Yeah. And I was, oh, artists. Uh, yeah. You know, you no might want to get an education no money first. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I know that you're uh, as talented as you are and that you're the star. He's glue. I've oh. watched. I've traveled enough to see the setup, the sound, the, oh, and yeah. even the performing. And, the and support, now I'm and the super stoked because... You empower him to sing, which is really exciting for mm -hmm. all of us women because it brings a oh. whole new dimension as well. I like to share my uh, to, sh to share the yeah. beauty around me, which is and, pretty oh wonderful. God, it is wonderful. So those yeah. uh, happiness, authenticity again, that creative mm -hmm. uh, daring to be themselves is is are all attributes that. Why, if you're looking for anybody, because I've been single as of December, 15 years now. So oh, mama! I think we're ready. We're ready. You know? Shelly Meisner, Knowlton, the Official. gardener extraordinaire. <laughs> she doesn't mind getting her knees dirty, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, did she say that? Oh, did I say that? I did. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All fours. <laughs> 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 Everybody wants to date a gardener because they're always on all fours. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I I just I really appreciate every single word that comes out of your mouth, and you have helped me write that record, and you have helped me to move into the next stage of my life, and my husband and I are are stronger uh, because I know you're a hot chicken. I got to make sure that he sticks with me and he doesn't wander. <laughs> Whenever you're around, so you gotta keep this. No, 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 I keep all the other women That's away. Right. That's no, what you, you have do. to know. When know all that. the other ones, they the want to know who the blonde one is with Denny. Who's it's the like, blonde one dancing at I'm the I'm the bodyguard. Then. That's good. I love it. I love it. Love it. Um, but you have helped me write this record, and I do, uh, I do believe that you've made a lot of my journey much easier. And I, I'm very grateful that you've been there to lead me, to, to feed me the words I need to think even for myself and figure it out but always there to catch me. And uh, I just hope that uh, the record, as you said, is, is going to help people as it's helped me and that the people are going to get the gist of it because it is different from all my other ones. And it does talk about a lot of heavy, heavy uh, schedules. Schedules? <laughs> Denise going like this, I'm like, again, am I on a schedule? What is it? No. You know. It's so warm right now, the right side of my face. I think we should change sides. Let's change sides. Okay, so they can see my sides. extraordinarily long legs. Oh, my thing. See how gorgeous you are. Between my legs. 
No, I'm the same man I've had all week. <laughs> oh, I got to the other side. Now we're close. Now you get to see my sexy legs. Um, your ability to do those goddamn Tibetan, <laughs> Tibetan yes. rites every morning. Share that with me. I tried to do it, but I have a bad back. At the very beginning, it really was a discipline. I had to convince myself, but now I can't wake up and get up fast enough and have them done. Uh, it, it's like it wakes up every part of your body including my digestive system, and you so that I that... fine tune, I work like, I do 10, 12 hour days in a garden. I know, I'm almost crazy. 60. I know, you, you know, look, you don't look at telling you. It's, it's, it's just, uh, it, it, it's, it works. Well, it's a fountain I of youth, right? It, that isn't it works, that in the yeah. book, you can get that, those, yeah. and it's called the Fountain of Youth, the book, and you can. It's five different rites that the, the Tibetan monks do on a religious, well, they do sustenance too, which, I've done the sixth rite as well, which ah, I don't really years. brag about. Let's not talk about that. It's okay. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's about strengthening your core and aligning your chakras. And it really does work. It does, yeah. Uh, and I'm curious because they, most monks are men, so I'm not sure how many women have actually been doing really? the Tibetan rites right. for, and for how long. And being a prior athlete, my body has cellular memory, so... I get strong really quickly. Okay. As soon as I start training, my right. body recognizes it because it remembers it because I did it my whole right. life. So as soon as I Wait dropped the 40 pounds, I, I dropped 40 pounds doing it yeah. without really changing my diet very much. So it just told me that it That's was crazy. allowing my system to function better. Better. And and who doesn't want to be way. younger? Well, that's the thing they call and it, the fountain better. of youth, right? And feel better. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I even now, I, you know how Facebook shows us and shares us those pictures from six or seven or eight years uh, ago or God whatever. Forbid, yeah. I look younger today than yeah. I did eight years ago, so yeah. it's working. So that and, and obviously having a healthy diet and not, I know you don't overeat. You eat when you're hungry and you do a lot of nibbling. I'm lucky because I don't cook. I eat a lot right out of the garden and I have wonderful friends that love to cook. So I bring them abundance and they cook and for they you. share and I eat pretty much whatever is. What is your line that you say, uh, cultivating change? Oh, well, the slogan for my business is cultivating change. The, the greenhouse that we, uh, the garden that we have at the school, the slogan for the school is a community that sows together, grows together. Yeah. And I'm really proud to say that we've amassed thousands of dollars and thousands of pounds of vegetables all produced locally and that's for the an, kids that's at Academy. Academy. Right? Yeah. They've revamped the kitchen now. Nice. They raised a ton of money and the, somebody else had the inspiration inside the four walls to do the kitchen. You so. have such a voice that people listen to you and, and you're so creative and it's all about cultivating change and, and, and in ourselves and into and, and for communities and for just ways of, of living your life that... Uh, that I, I think you should have your own show and you should have a show and you should be sharing it and having people on and because you, uh, your brain is, it, it, I've thought it's about actually doing some um, motivational, like uh, inviting people to manage their money better or, you know, yeah. make better choices, life choices. Or how to get ABC. legs. Is there a way to get legs like these? Yeah, my mother always used to say I ate so many potatoes when I was young. She goes, one day those are going to fill up. <laughs> Wow. My mom used to tell me to eat olives, make my boobs bigger. So I would always have like two or four or six or eight. I could never have just one or three because I'd be like, <laughs> I grew up thinking that. <laughs> and it worked. Hey, babe. It worked. <laughs> well, I'm going to say uh, I appreciate so much you coming out and having some... Uh, some uh, red Many hot sofa Many future top. albums. I put hot Thank peppers you. in there for you. You did, eh? Should we make yeah. a salad with all that stuff, maybe? You can do Can you eat the flowers like. that are in there? The sweet peas are yeah. edible. Are edible, very nice. And there's kale and there's, there's pretty much everything that's in my garden that was ready. I brought you some. Thank you. Shelley Meisner is garden extraordinaire, gardener extraordinaire, living in Knowlton and uh, cultivating change. And one day if you see her name somewhere that because she's uh, giving a course or she's uh, doing a, being a, Emotional promotion. Or selling CDs. Or selling CDs for me. Because I'm a groupie. Or she's my, you know, if you try and come near my mat, she's going to tackle you down because she's, she's rugby. Yes, she's been I might rugby. hurt you. I might hurt you. Yeah. Um, Got to protect the family jewels. <laughs> my family jewels. The, okay. the, fa the family jewels because we're all a family. Yes. Thank you for being with me, Shelly. Thank you for all your love and all your support and 
that brain of yours and that heart of yours. I love you dearly. Good mirror. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs>